Hi everyone, welcome to Wesno's Tech News and Reviews. Today we are going to be talking about the Fitbit Inspire 2 and a long-term review because simply we've had the tracker for over a month now. In this particular review, we'll be doing a five on five analysis. What that means is that we're gonna have one like and then one dislike about that particular feature or function on the tracker because at the end of the day you do need to know the brutal truth about the Inspire 2 and yes there's plenty of good things but there are some downfalls and you have to know about them let's get into it if you are new to Wesno's tech news and reviews we talk about the latest tech news we do brutally honest reviews and share hacks and tricks along the way we did a detailed review on the Inspire 2 when it just came out. Then we had it in a head-to-head -head versus the all-new Samsung Galaxy Fit 2. We've also tested its sleep tracking against other fitness trackers from Samsung, Huawei, Honor, and Amaz Fit. So literally, we do know the Fitbit Inspire 2 inside out. And what we're going to be talking about in this particular review are the strengths and weaknesses of the tracker. Before we get into the interesting features and functions, let's do a recap of what the tracker actually brings to you as standard. So of course you do get your calories burned, you do get your step count, it does monitor your heart rate throughout the day and night continuously. You also get an app for guided breathing exercises. There's also female health tracking available. Another, well it's rather standard, sometimes not so standard, is the quick reply option. So basically if you are using an Android device, connected to your Inspire 2. Once you get a text, you can actually reply off the watch face simply by tapping your screen. If you are using your iPhone, you would not be able to use that option. So without further ado, let's get into it and discuss Fitbit Inspire's most significant strengths and at the same time, its pitfalls. Let's take a look at the Fitbit Inspire 2. Let's begin with the obvious, the fashionable yet still questionable design of Fitbit Inspire 2. The good is that the Fitbit Inspire 2 looks quite similar to the original Inspire and Inspire HR, but now has a quick release band that makes it easier to switch to a new look, plus a more rounded case design. The tracker is literally feather light at only 8 grams without the strap and just 20 with it. The design is different in comparison to the standard pellet like slim forms. The strap needs particular mentioning. It's awesome. That's all I can say about it. You get both short and long straps in the box to fit practically any wrist size from five to seven and a half inches. The strap is velvety soft and pleasant on your skin. You won't experience any irritation nor any discomfort while wearing it during the day and night. The clasp is thankfully the classic watch type, easy to slip on or off even during an activity. So even though the design is fashionable, there are weaknesses. The tracker case on the Inspire 2 is plastic it's all plastic the tracker screen is not scratch resistant which is a shame knocks and bumps are common and i wouldn't want to wreck this pricey activity deal on the first activity day another plus to the tracker is that the display is oled meaning it's bright and crisp and the white on blacks look great and visibility is great in any light conditions now the downside of this oled screen is the display size as you can see the tracker face is not small but rather standard with dimensions 37 by 16 by 12.7 millimeters but the actual screen size is tiny not small not smallish it's literally tiny then why is there so much screen but so little display the black and white may sound cool and if a little retro classic the fact is it's boring all the other trackers are getting larger and larger screens with brighter and better colors, but you'll be getting a tiny black and white display. Let's talk sports and auto activity recognition on the Fitbit Inspire 2. So Inspire 2 is serious about fitness and you get to choose from 20 plus goal-based exercise modes to get real-time stats during your workouts. Or let SmartTrack automatically recognize and record your exercises. SmartTrack recognizes activities with continuous movement or high movement, such as walking, running, aerobic workouts, swimming, tennis, basketball, etc. This is actually some pretty cool stuff because we've seen so many trackers do auto activity recognition for the likes of walking, running, using the rower machine or elliptical trainings. But things like recognizing when you're playing football or soccer or when you're playing rugby or doing the Zumba. Now that's pretty cool. So in theory, it sounds great. 
it looks absolutely amazing on paper but the fact is we've actually tested this out by me doing my long parkland walks or evening jogs and for the most pronounced activities yes smart track did recognize them as the walks and the jogs but in some cases it just didn't pick it up so again it, it works for most part which is great but I hope that it will get fixed in the future firmware updates from Fitbit. Another downside, and that's back to the screen size, is just that when you are doing an activity, just looking up at that tiny screen, and if you're running, actually making out what's written there is just so darn difficult. And if you are interested in looking at any sort of activity stats, you will actually have to pull out your phone and look at the phone, because obviously better screen, more stats, and once again, the screen is tiny. You can't see anything detailed on it. Sleep tracking is a very important function to have. And a lot of the smartwatches and full-fledged sport watches do offer it. So what the Fitbit Inspire 2 does is it records your falling asleep, your awakening, and in between, your light, your deep and REM sleep. So it also gives you a sleep score and it gives you advice on how to improve your sleep which is excellent but there's a problem that sleep tracking capability is not exactly spot on because we've actually tested the sleep accuracy against samsung fitness tracker against an amos fit fitness tracker and the honor using huawei sleep tracking technology and what we have found is that the fitbit inspire 2 is overly sensitive to your tosses and turns during the night and it actually recognizes those tosses and turns as awakenings hence lowering your overall sleep quantity hence lowering your sleep score and of course the advice that it gives you based on your sleep score is well it's not quite as accurate as it could have been and finally we get to the fifth like and dislike and this is well potentially it is a cherry on the cake because what fitbit is saying buy the fitbit inspire 2 and we are going to give you one year free of the premium subscription which is worth 80 dollars a year so basically you're getting a tracker for a hundred bucks and you're getting a service that costs 80 bucks for free great and a premium subscription does have a lot of perks. So you could actually use the programs for improving your nutrition, your health, your exercise. You do have coaching available there. You have much more detailed stats about the activities that you actually do. You also have guided workout plans to help you build strength in different areas. That is all part of this premium experience. Now that's all great. You get that for free, but only for the first year. Now. Let's talk about the weakness on that side. Well, the fact is, you're buying a tracker today for 100 bucks. Yeah, for the next year, you can use the premium service for free, but did you consider the ongoing cost of this? You'll be paying 80 bucks a year going forward. Are you prepared to do that? You're gonna get used to these premium features, so not sure. And since we're really talking about money, let's talk about the price. So the Fitbit Inspire 2 costs $100. That's not cheap, considering that the all-new Samsung Galaxy Fit 2 is sold for $49. That's half price. Then, of course, we've got the trackers from Amaz Fit, from Honor, from Huawei. And I can't say that they offer anything less. They might be missing some of the functionality from the Fitbit, but they've got something else that the Fitbit doesn't offer. And those trackers also cost like the Samsung Galaxy Fit 2, or close to it, from $40 to $60. And at the end, we're left with a tracker, the Fitbit Inspire 2, which has a smaller screen. It's black and white, and it costs double the price of its competition. Plus, it's got a premium service, which you will have to keep on paying for even after you're done with the first year. So I think these things really do have to be considered when you make the purchase. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the Fitbit Inspire 2 and will you be upgrading or do you plan on actually getting the tracker and why? What are your reasons? And if you did enjoy the content on the Wesner's Tech News and Reviews channel, then please do press the subscribe button below the video. Thanks for joining.